So you've been doing your research and you saw my video where I said, do not have a hair transplant. And you're still thinking about having a hair transplant. Well, because you're still thinking about it, you should understand what it's like to actually live with one. So as you can see, I'm standing out here, I'm on my balcony and it is snow <laughs> snowing like crazy. Uh, I thought this was a great opportunity to talk to you about what it's like to live with a hair transplant because of the different situations you're going to find yourself in from day to day. So being the winter time, we have to wear hats usually or else of course our heads will freeze. <laughs> So when you're dealing with a, a winter hat of some sort, what happens to your hair transplant if you've got it styled? That's the thing about hair transplantation is because you're not dealing with a full head of hair, at least in cases um, of extreme hair loss with even 10,000 grafts transplanted like myself, I still have situations where no matter how much I style it, no matter how much hairspray I put on it or gel or what have you, I can't wear a hat. Because if I do, this happens. As you can see, it just doesn't look so hot. It's all messed up here. It's already getting a little bit wet from the, uh, from the snow. And of course it is windy. And you can see in the back that it just doesn't hold a style. Part of that's because my hair is so fine, but it's also because of this. This looks pretty bad. <laughs> As you can see, my hair is just a little bit wet. It's not, not a big deal, but it is definitely messed up. It's seen better days. One common question I get is, you know, do I have to wash my hair um, any differently because I've had a hair transplant? The answer is no. As far as shampoos go, I just use a, a normal shampoo. Now this is actually a really um, high quality shampoo. It's called Pie Shao Lather. Now, a few times a week, um, I will use Nizerol. That's also a really good shampoo. And when your hair is really, really wet, there's no problem with taking a towel and drying your hair just as if you'd never lost your hair before. And then brushing it, of course, just like normal. I particularly like these kinds of brushes because they really massage my scalp. It just feels good. And while I can treat my hair normally, um, when I start brushing it after it's, it's wet, it actually dries really fast because the density isn't nearly what it used to be before I started losing my hair. In fact, if you take someone that has my old hair loss pattern and if they're classified as a diffused thinner, meaning that they have all these small hairs on top of their scalp, they probably have more hair than I do density wise, but because my hair is terminal and um, healthy transplanted hair that is, will grow as long as I want it to, um, I do have a fuller appearance because of the length that it can get to. This line represents a scalp. In some cases, when hair is being affected by DHT over a large area, it will many times simply shrink and become miniaturized. The density is the same as it always was, but the hair shafts are reduced in diameter. This makes the hair look thinner overall, and it usually has trouble growing more than a few centimeters. Transplanted hairs, even when finely trimmed and prepared, have a much thicker diameter than hairs that are miniaturized. The shaft diameter is full and unaffected by DHT. No matter which doctor you go to, you won't ever get the same density you once had for a variety of reasons. However, original density is not necessary when your goal is coverage because the larger diameter of the transplanted hairs can and do cover a larger area than full density miniaturized hairs. They also grow longer and they give an overall fuller appearance once they've reached their sweet spot for length. And on top of being able to brush it, uh, towel dry it, um, scrub it, whatever, uh, just like someone that hasn't lost their hair, I can also blow dry it. And then the part line is also a weak area. Now it is stronger now because I have my PRP procedure. Um, you can see the video down below. 
um, but it's still not as thick as it would be had I never lost my hair. So that's another area that I have to be aware of. And it's looking all right now. Yeah, so this is basically uh, how my hair looks before I go out every day. I've got my part line, which is a weak spot, which is looking pretty good now. I've got the back, which is also a weak spot. And then of course the top, if we separate it, this is what it's like on top. You can see. And then the back is also weak there. So now that it's styled, um, there's one more thing I usually do, and that's hairspray. However, I'm about to go out without the hairspray, and we'll see how much this blows around. Hitting the road because I was requested to go on a drive to Costco. And Mrs. Mentor is going to be filming this thing out in the elements with no hairspray. Controversial? You be the judge. Ah! All right, so I can already feel my hair kind of blowing around in the wind. I can feel the rain already coming out of my scalp. Do you want to clean up the hair transplant industry? Costco is the perfect place for supplies. <laughs> traffic lights when we're sailing. The element is getting inside of the car. I mean, it's raining. I'm cold. It's no amount of wind or rain is going to mess it up. That's not the point. It's you, it does mess it up. You just... Okay, so back home and in the studio, I combed my hair, finally put on the hairspray, which I cannot live without. Um, but I hope that this was valuable for you and giving you a bit of insight on what it's like to live with a hair transplant. Now keep in mind, I was very bald, I had repair work done, and in total I've had about 25,000 hairs transplanted uh, since the beginning of my surgical experience. Um, and what that does is it, it allows me to have a natural appearance, even though it's you know weak in the back and it does kind of flow around a little bit in the wind, it still looks normal. So if you listen to my previous video where I said don't have a hair transplant because you need to accept the possibility of it not working out or even looking horrible, and then you still wanna have a hair transplant and you can see what I deal with and if you think it's something that is attractive for you, then you just might be ready to have a hair transplant. But not before you do your research and that's where we're going to be going from here on. So I'm still going to be teaching you what to look for in uh, clinics and um, how to do your research and um, all these other things that you need to look out for before you actually do have a hair transplant. So stay tuned, subscribe down below, click the subscribe button, whichever side it's on, and tell your friends, share it, like it, and help get the word out because I want to educate you on how to get the best hair transplant possible.